Hello people, you're with Got That Funk, and uh, it's just going to be a very quick video this time. I was watching a video, I think it was yesterday, by the Woods of Jordan, something about how you can't be gay and a Christian at the same time. And, um, you know, I'm going to spare my subscribers yet another video from me to Jordan about the issue of homosexuality. I tried instead to have a conversation with Jordan in comments, but he got so frustrated with me, he disabled comments for about an hour, thinking that would go away. But of course, when he re-enabled him, I came back, and um, he just started to ignore me after that. But I did have a semi-interesting conversation with one of his disciples. Uh, sorry, viewers. Um, anyway, um, and they basically seem to think, that his viewer and Jordan himself, basically seem to think that uh, homosexuals, they, they obviously think homosexuality is a sin, that's well rehearsed, and that homosexuals should give up their sin in order to repent and turn to God. Well... This brings me back to a question I had back in the old days when I was a Christian myself, because as most of you will probably be aware, in order to become a Christian, um, you have to admit that you are a sinner, admit that you can't cease to sin, and therefore you need Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Now, the premise that you can't cease to sin is extremely important to me, because it relates to this issue. Now, back in those days, I, I didn't really think very much about homosexuality, um, and, but I did ask my pastor, I said, how can I repent from something that I was born to do, i.e. sin? Because if you believe in the Christian dogma, you're born to sin. You can't help it. And if you can't help something, how are you supposed to stop doing it? Well, obviously, my pastor said to me that I was looking at repentance in the wrong sense, and he said, of course, obviously, you should try your very best not to do things that you recognize are wrong to do. Well, that's good advice whether you're a Christian or not. Um, and then he all went on to say about the, the real way to repent is to show God your devotion. And the only way to show God your devotion is by loving thy neighbor, um, doing unto others as you would have others do unto you. Um, if your enemy strikes you on the left cheek, offer him your right cheek. You know, all that good stuff that Jesus talked about. I'm talking about Jesus here, not Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, but the things that Jesus said. Follow those examples. And, again, even if you're not a Christian, you know, loving strangers and showing compassion to everybody and, uh, and um, doing unto other people as you want other people to do unto you, that, you know, that, those are all perfectly reasonable um, approaches to living. Um, you, don't have, you can divorce the religious connotation from them and they still have merit. But that doesn't seem to be what Jordan and his people are talking about. Why would that be? Well, in my opinion, that's because they're bigots and fucking homophobes, and they're using their religion to try to give it some veneer of respectability because they think their religion is respectable in the first place. Um, when, in fact, like I say, if you can't stop sinning, I defy any of you who want homosexuals to stop their fucking sin, I defy you to stop sinning for fucking 24 hours. It's not possible. If you can't stop sinning for even one day, how can you reasonably expect anybody to give up not just their lifestyle, but who they are in the name of God? Now, giving up who you are in the name of God, to me, seems to be a step too far. Um, and if you disagree, if you think that's per perfectly reasonable to change your nature or to change your character for God, I would just give you an example of how some other religions show their devotion to God. Um, in Hinduism, there's a sect of believers called sadhus. That's S-A-D-H-U. And sadhus, um, what they do is they take a vow um, when they take on the discipline, and um, they keep that vow for the rest of their life to show their devotion to God. Now, some of them, for example, will vow to God that they're going to stand up for the rest of their lives, and they literally never sit or lie down ever again. Most of these guys have to go around with at least one or two crutches because, you know, the range of motion, if you're going to be upright the whole time, limits um, how your body can move after a few years. I know some sadhus put one hand up over their head and they leave it up for the rest of their lives. You know, we're talking 60, 70 years. They keep their hand over their head. Of course, after two or three years, um, the, uh, the joint at the shoulder calcifies and they couldn't put their arm down even if they wanted to. But they're still showing their devotion in a very real, visible way. Check this guy out. 
this picture really moved me when I first saw it. This is a sadhu, and he has obviously decided to show his devotion to God by walking on nails for the rest of his life. Um, so, you know, there is a universal religious, um, I suppose, what's the word, presupposition that giving up something sacred to you or giving up something that you find easy um, is a way to show God your devotion. But quite frankly, Christians, if you think this guy is nuts, then you're nuts for thinking someone can give up who they are just because they want to show their devotion to God.